Let's go to the word of the Lord today. I know I probably was getting on, amen, our, our uh, sound team, our, our technology team's nerves last night because I was up about three or so trying to <laughs> uh, gather this thought together and uh, I kept stewing on it, but uh, I thank God for the word, amen, that comes to challenge us today from the book of Judges. Book of Judges. I want to share something I believe that's in concert with uh, uh, our conference. So uh, go with me and travel with me to the book of Judges, chapter number 15. And when you get it, you can just rise to your feet with me real quickly for the reading of God's word. Ah, for Minister Hurd, amen. Appreciate you being with us. Give God a hand praise, amen. For Brother Brian, amen, being with us. Man, man, until of course these great uh, minstrels and musicians and our singers come on, give God a hand, praise for our music ministry, amen. I need y'all to put your hands together, amen. Who of us can play a triangle, can play a tambourine straight, <laughs> can bang on a pot, amen, and syncopation. But we thank God for <laughs> these five musicians, amen. Uh, Judges 15, verses 14. Through 19, here beginning the reading of God's holy word. And when he had came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax uh, that was burnt with fire, and the bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew 10,000 men therewith. Samson said with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, uh, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain, amen, uh, have I slain, somebody trying to call me, don't call me right now, <laughs> amen, uh, and Samson said with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain 10,000 men, and it came to pass when he had made end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and he called the place uh, the Raphamlia. Amen. Rapha Malia. Amen. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into thy hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst, fall into the land of the uncircumcised. But God claved and hollow place that was uh, in the jaw and there came water thereout. And when he drunk, amen, his spirit came again and he revived. Wherefore, he named, uh, he called the name thereof Echonhor, which means, uh, which is Lehi unto this day. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your insight. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak your eternal words of life and minister as only you can. I pray, O oh God, that you would give us, O oh God, the confidence to declare what we rehearsed in private. And I pray, O oh God, that you would help us with alliteration. I pray, O oh God, that you will help us with illumination. We need you to speak now in Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. For just a few moments today, I want to minister to you from this subject. Um, I've got to be more picky. <laughs> just tell somebody, I've got to be more picky. Come on, talk to me, singles. <laughs> Certainly, this thought came to me as I considered uh, the challenges associated uh, with uh, the nature of singlehood. Um, I've been married for quite some time, but I certainly understood the journey um, as a single man and how important stewardship is uh, in the seasons of singleness. Um, for those that are um, challenged with us today or with, have been with us um, for this past few weeks, we've been dealing with the concept of stewardship. And I certainly subscribe to the idea that, you know, uh, stewardship is magnified in your season of singleness. Scripture tells us that we should be careful um, in the book of Galatians. It speaks to the, the necessity of being careful and specific that we aren't impressed with ourselves or that we deal with comparison in our single state, um, but that we must be responsible and creative with the things that God has given us, according to the book of Galatians, chapter number six. And that takes on a whole different tone, according to uh, the teachings of the Apostle Paul. Uh, 
the Apostle Paul teaches, uh, I believe it's in Corinth when he's sharing uh, these uh, discussions concerning um, the topic of singleness that he says he would rather us be single, that we would care for the things of God. He says that when you enter into matrimony or you enter into marriage, uh, that those who husbands uh, seek to do the things of, of the world, that they may please their wife. And, and certainly wives do the same thing, seek the things of the world that they may uh, please their husbands. Uh, the Apostle Paul's um, declaration to us is that there will always be a conflict in union. But if you are singleness of heart or in the single state, that you can shift your attention to the things of God. And it's interesting because certainly we all, amen, whether you are on the spectrum of I'm okay where I am, uh, we all desire companionship. Amen. And certainly when you're single, you have, amen, without the certain responsibilities um, that others have being part of a union or have the cares of the world, as the Apostle Paul says, there's certainly a perspective of stewardship, management, oversight that you must pay particular attention to. It's in the season of singleness, amen, that we have to become better stewards of our body, all right? Um, and I know uh, and certainly uh, it's not necessarily uh, from a fitness perspective, uh, but certainly, amen, as singles, there's things we have to be astute and aware of concerning, amen, the, the, uh, the challenges that may potentially plague us because we don't have a companion looking over us to ensure we're eating right or that uh, we um, are having regular doctor visits and things of that nature. There's more concern, more care over our personal upkeep, all right? Yeah. Every now and then, it's okay to put some Vaseline, all right, in, in some areas, all right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right, it's okay to, for grooming, things of that nature, right? Amen? Huh? Amen. The man that found the wife found the good thing, all right? But uh, you also, amen, got to be seen too, right? <laughs> all right, so, amen. We all grown here, amen? Kids is out the room, right? <laughs> uh, we have to be stewards of our body, all right? Not necessarily to impress, but amen, steward to the upkeep of what we have, all right? Because again, until we're able to latch into a union, amen, sometimes we have to, it's when we're single that, you know, we don't take as much care for things. We don't have a person in our ear saying, uh, you sure you want to do that? We don't have that accountability system concerning the things that we put in our body, all right? Uh, we have to learn in our state of singleness how to steward our desires, Scriptures tell us, amen, that, amen, it is uh, God that gives us desires of our hearts. But sometimes it, in this, our single nature, we have to be very careful um, that we don't place the triumph desires we have over the desire that God has for us. Have you been there before where sometimes your desires compete with God's desires? You ever been there before where sometimes it's a competition? I really want this, and God is saying, I know you really want this, and you think I'm having faith to trust God for the desire of my heart when God is saying it's not my particular will. We have to be careful. It's when we're single that we're more ambitious. It's single that we're, amen, can do things sometimes that shift our desires away from God's design, plan, and divine course. And so we have to be greater stewards over that. We have to be greater stewards over relationships. I think when we're single, we have to understand, amen, that uh, our uh, uh, relationship circles, amen, have an ability sometimes to for forecast us uh, into models of relationships that may either be healthy or unhealthy to us. We have to be careful about the company we keep, the crowd we keep, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they taught us growing up at the home church, you know, that as singles, it was important for us, amen, to, um, to, to operate in solidarity, for us to be yoked together as singles so that, amen, there was accountability, all right, so that you had people who were uh, thriving and striving for spiritual things and um, so that our, our networks weren't just the people who had carnal desires, but we had people who could check us and hold us accountable to make sure, hey, you know what, uh, even in my state of singleness, uh, uh, I'm still devoted to prayer and the things of God, all right? We have to be careful about relationships in our single state. Yes. Sour relationships can corrupt, all right? So it tells us in his word, evil communication corrupt good manners, all right? And so we have to steward over our relationships. The relationship we have with God sometimes, amen, uh, takes a backseat because our, of our relationship with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to steward even our relationship. For some of us, um, our single nature makes us free. I don't have any obligations. I can take my trip to Paris. I can do this. I can do that. And what we are, what we're not careful of, is that we will invest so much in ourselves that it overrides our relationship with God. 
our relationship of status, our relationship even to prove that we don't need, amen, uh, support. We have to be careful of that, all right? Um, and certainly, last but not least, a man, of course, the stewardship of our time, short of our talents, things of that nature. But uh, I, I think it's interesting when we consider, amen, the concept of, of, of destiny, when we consider the concept of baggage, when we consider the, the concept associated with our theme of uh, this weekend that we take to heart, amen, sometimes the psychological nature associated with selectiveness. I was reading this article in Psychology Today that speaks to this concept of selectiveness or pickiness, because sometimes that's the stigma associated with people who are single. You know, you're single because you you're so picky, <laughs> you're so particular, you're so selective. All right. <laughs> so I was reading this article about this, and I found this quite interesting. And they said that you know certainly being picky is not necessarily a bad thing. Being picky sometimes speaks to the intuition that we have. They call it the intuition of a superpower. That's what the article said, but I certainly thought, hey, you know, that the intuition that we have with the Holy Ghost, amen. certainly, amen, uh, uh, our discernment and our state of singleness, amen, causes us to make sure this is the will of God. Uh, anybody ever dated a project? <laughs> anybody ever, you know, had coffee with... <laughs> Something that almost was packaged like God, almost. In, and the truth of the matter is, in some spectrums of amen, our, our relational stewardship and the single nature, um, we didn't roll the merry-go-round and we've had the experience and, and uh, we thought it was God and found out that it wasn't God. And so uh, from a psychological perspective, um, the feedback is it's okay to be amen picky. Picky means that I'm leaning on, amen, God's direction. I'm leaning on God's insight. It means that I'm paying attention and giving sensitivity, amen, to the warning signs, the triggers, the things associated, amen, with his divine will. Now, some folks over-spiritualize it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was talking to, amen, a, a friend of mine a couple days ago that's single, and he was just, I like the fight. I like the competitiveness associated, amen, the challenge of, of, of pursuit, you know, uh, uh, that kind of male masculine construct associated with relationships. I like the pursuit. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want it just to be easy. And I said, certainly I get that, but couldn't it just be maybe God is rewarding you for your faithfulness? <laughs> See, sometimes we, in our mind, we psychoanalyze things. Somebody catch that back door. Amen. Uh, sometimes we uh, psychoanalyze things, and sometimes we, you know, uh, uh, get in our own ways a, a certain things, and sometimes it's like we make things harder than it has to be. God could be putting the right person right where you need to be as a reward for your faithfulness. You think it's not God because you didn't fight for it. You didn't labor for it. You didn't, uh, you didn't go through the process of it. And so sometimes we can, amen, get in our own way associated with the things that God has prepared and put right in front of us. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have the right, amen, to be picky because, amen, nobody, amen, should ever have to settle. It's all right. Stewardship is about choices. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, amen, if we are not careful, we'll settle. We'll settle, we'll settle, we'll settle, we'll settle. <laughs> we'll just make it work. You ever been there before when you just had to make a job work? You just had to make it work. And I believe that God is saying, I want to deliver you from making it work. Um, I want to deliver you from you having to just, amen, settle or have to just go along with it because you feel like you have no options. <laughs> We can be picky because picky, amen, speaks not just to preference, but it speaks to values. When we are selective, it says my values matter. Don't ever get so put in a place where you feel backed up or you feel so, amen, like you're having to compete with the narrative of the time that you put, amen, your values, amen, to the side. You put the things that matter you to you to the side and, and too many times not so much settling so many, so many times in the spectrum of stewardship we end up compromising the things that are important to us the things that are value to us no longer have weight because we're in competition with a perspective and God says get delivered from that you have the right to be picky <laughs> uh, well uh, 
I also believe, amen, that, amen, it's imperative that we understand that we can be picky because there are always long-term effects associated with every decision. Sometimes we make a decision based upon spontaneity. Live in the moment. No Bible for it, but live in the moment. <laughs> I'm just going to go along with it. And, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's that perspective that sometimes hinders our stewardship. Uh, I'm glad you're warming up. Amen. Let's go a little bit further. Because <laughs> uh, we don't like to talk sometimes about these things, all right, <laughs> in church. But I think it's important. I think it's important, amen, that you should never ignore the red signs. Never the red flags. You should never ignore those. James tells us, amen, uh, in the book of uh, James, chapter 1, number 15, amen, that see when sin, when it is conceived, it bringeth forth uh, lust and lust when it's fully conceived, bring it forth death. Amen. We get that from James 1 and 15. The NIV says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to uh, sin, and sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. Amen. And what we must understand is we cannot ignore the things that will lead us to the detriment of death and will not lead us amen down the path sometimes there are things amen that we just ignore things that we just overlook things that we just look past not knowing amen that um, there's signs of destruction signs amen uh, that can lead us amen to our relationship with God being damaged Scripture also goes on to tell us, amen, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5 and verse number 13, amen, uh, the NIV says, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light, which means there are certain things, amen, um, that we think, amen, we don't clearly quite see, but when the light hits, we'll see, amen, uh, the things that aren't necessarily revealed to us. We make decisions sometimes in the dark. We make decisions sometimes without having the full lens of God. And this is uncomfortable, even ministering in a capacity like this, but I think it'll all make sense when we explore the stewardship of a man by the name of Samson. Uh, in order for us to fully understand Samson, we have to understand, amen, how Samson came to be. Samson came to be, amen, because his parents were in a state known as barren. Ah, uh, Manoah, amen, and Manoah's wife, amen, had desired to start a family. And the scripture says, for whatever reason, God shut up the womb. She was barren. The scripture says that one day Manoah's wife, amen, is out in the fields, amen, doing what she does. And the scripture says that an angel shows up to her and says, you are going to have a child. Not only are you going to have a child, but there's specific instructions that are given, amen, concerning this child. He shall be a Nazarite. Mm. Uh, you are to make sure, amen, yeah, God is particular, he's picky about how this child shall be raised. Uh, you have to understand you're going to teach him the things of God. He's going to hearken unto the voice of God. You're going to make sure that he, amen, uh, uh, that, that she, uh, Manal, uh, Manoah, amen's wife, uh, that she don't come any, near anything that's near a vine, that she eats nothing unclean, and that she command, that she takes command and observes everything that I'm telling you concerning her destiny. The scripture says that Manoah, amen, Manoah's wife just thinks, hey, this, this, this is crazy. Ain't no way in the world no angel just going to show up to me out of nowhere and read me and tell me uh, my secret prayer petitions. Hold on one second. I'm going to go grab my husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so she runs and tells her husband this very thing that's going on. And, and uh, he's saying, you know, I don't know what, I, uh, that don't make no sense. And, and don't be playing with me. And, and nevertheless, they pray a prayer that if this if everything is to happen that the angel of the Lord will appear again the angel of the Lord amen comes again and when the angel of the Lord comes again to Manoah's wife she was like hold on one second hold on <laughs> uh, let me go get Manoah you, you got to come see this and the angel begins now to tell Manoah Manoah's wife all of the instructions that he's given Manoah uh, the scripture says that, uh, that at the end of the declaration, uh, Manoah says to the angel, uh, uh, stay with us, stay with us. This word that you've given us is so powerful. We cannot just let you leave. We got to give you some kind of offering. We got to offer you some kind of bread. You don't just get to give this kind of bread to us concerning our prayer petition. You don't have to give us uh, this word about the thing that will change the course of our family history and lineage and, and get to leave. Uh, 
stay with us. We want to offer you bread. We want to offer you a sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord says, "Ah, I don't want you to give me anything, but whatever you do, offer it unto the Lord. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the scripture says that as they offer up this meat offering that uh, unto amen the Lord and they offered it upon amen the rock unto the Lord amen that the flame went up into the heaven from the altar and the angel ascended from the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife look and they fell on the ground amen and their faces to the ground as if something catastrophic had happened as if somehow maybe they had offended God some kind of way. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, because the angel did not appear anymore. And, and, and then the scripture says that Manoah's wife got discouraged. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Manoah got discouraged. <laughs> uh, Manoah had said unto his wife, uh, we shall surely die because we have seen God. But I thank God for the woman of God, Manoah's wife that told Manoah, take heart. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, why would God show us all these things just to kill us <laughs> uh, why would God show us the thing that he wants to do in our life just to wipe us out <laughs> uh, I want to encourage somebody here today why would God show you why would God tease you why would God show you the things that you're supposed to steward over <laughs> uh, yes and then sentence you to death before you see it happen <laughs> uh, wake your neighbor up and say you're going to live to see this Come on, tell somebody, you're going to live to see this. You're going to live to see this. God is not teasing you. (laughs) He wouldn't wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and show you a vision. He wouldn't put the thing in your heart and your spirit and then walk away from you for you to figure it out. Somebody ought to praise God for the promise that he's given you, that he's faithful to perform. Oh, come on, somebody give him praise in the house. The scripture says, amen, that Manoah's wife, amen, would go on to bear a son and they would name him Samson and the child would grow and the Lord would bless him and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. It's all right to praise him. (laughs) Ah, yeah, it's all right. Uh, Some of us uh, don't even understand what I just said because for some of you, you don't believe the things God is showing you. You don't believe, huh? Ah, yes, you're skeptical because you've had so many prophets tell you this and and so many people tell you that and it feels like it ain't ever came to pass so why would I believe God now but God sent me here with a word today (laughs) ah yes why would I put it on your plate why would I put it in your heart and I not make it good (laughs) oh somebody to clap your hands and give God praise for the word for the dream for every prophetic utterance concerning your life tell somebody it has to happen it has to happen it has to happen it has to happen and so the spirit of the lord moves upon a man this man samson The scripture says that he has a regimented life. He is a Nazarite. No one is supposed to touch his head. He's not supposed, amen, to dwell among things that are dead. He's not supposed to eat of the vine. There is a particularity about, amen, the anointing on his life. God in his pickiness says, "Uh, yes, I don't even want you to be around dead stuff. Uh, yeah, I got to wake this house up in here. Uh, yes, ask somebody, am I supposed to be sitting next to you? Uh, come on, talk to him. Am I supposed to be sitting next to you? Uh, I'm not allowed to sit next to stuff that's dead. Uh, you've been in this service an hour and 15 minutes. You ain't blink. You ain't hollered. You ain't clapped your hands. Uh, I don't know if I'm in violation. Uh, ask somebody, are you alive? He's a live praiser right now. Somebody hollering here like you're alive. Clap your hands like you're alive. Shout unto God like you're alive. Let everything that have breath praise you the Lord right now. I need to see a sign of life. <laughs> Ah, yeah. I 
need a sign of life <laughs> with the stuff that I'm facing in life with the devastation around me I'm allergic to things that are dead I'm allergic to a form of godliness and that oh, and no power therein come on in the house come on clap your hands and give God praise for life scriptures tell us amen that Samson is groomed uh, uh, yes with certain amen criteria he's amen he's groomed with a mantle of stewardship over his life uh, as he begins to grow and to mature uh, he now has uh, to manage that which God has given him uh, you have to remember the Old Testament the Holy Ghost falls upon certain ones and and empowers them to do work ah uh, yes but then the Holy Ghost will flee ah uh, yes and move as God ordains and orchestrates so here in the book of Judges amen God moves upon Samson and he deposits an anointing upon his life ah uh, yes but it's not permanent the scripture says uh, that as he's matriculating and he's growing up he now has to steward ah uh, yes this amen power that he possesses he has to steward this anointing that's on his life the scripture says amen that Samson understands that he has a strength ah uh, yes but he's challenged because he has issues with his vision uh, uh, Samson, amen, has a picky mandate over his life, uh, but Samson himself is picky. Uh, he likes what he likes. Uh, and the scripture says that Samson went down to Tenemoth and he saw a woman, uh, uh, yes, of the Philistines, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Uh, and because he's picky, he has to have her. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, let's talk about his singleness for a moment. Ah, uh, yes, you like what you like. Come on now. Uh, come on, don't be shy in here. Broad shoulders, complexion. Come on now. Ah, uh, yes, hip size. Ah, uh, yeah, bust, all that. Come on now. Come on, you like what you like, all right? Samson is particular about what it is he likes. But what happens when what you like is not what God requires? Ah, uh, yeah. He had to have. Uh, the problem why we have so much baggage is because you like what you like. Ah, uh, yes, at the detriment of what God wants. I promise we going up be in a quick moment, so uh, y'all better catch me because I feel like preaching. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me work. Ah, uh, yeah. So God uh, has a mandate over his life. And because God gave these instructions to Samson's parents, Samson's parents don't stop stewarding Samson. Let me talk to some parents for a quick moment. Ah, yes, you still have responsibility over your children. Yes, you do. Ah, yeah, they go to Samson and say, Samson now. All these Israelites, all these Hebrew women. Ah, yes, all these high cheekbones over here. All these girls with good hair. Ah, yeah, all these folk under the ways of Yahweh. And you got to go down the street and get that. <laughs> yeah. Are we in the singles conference? Come on now. If we would stop playing with us, some of us like what we like. The problem with what you like is sometimes you're so tied to what you like. You don't get room to God to give you what he wants. I don't know about you, but I'm getting delivered from my likes. Amen. I want to be married to God's will and what God's wants. Ah, I wish somebody, there's some folk in here right now said I was married to what I like for 10 years. Ah, yes, and now I'm still wounded about it. This time, I just want God's will for my life. Somebody say amen in here. Ah, yeah. Ah, yes. So Manoah and his wife say, Samson, come on, man. We know you can do better than that. We're not saying that she's bad. We're just saying that that's not what God wants. 
Uh, yeah, but Samson is picky. Uh, he has to have what he has to have. Uh, he tells his dad something uh, in scripture that tripped me out because I thought it's just something uh, that we say in the colloquialism of the day. Uh, he says, I want a wife. I want her to wife me. Uh, it's right there in the King James. <laughs> I said, man, I thought that was something we made up. <laughs> uh, no, it's in the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's actually the proper English for it. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the scripture says uh, that his father and mother now have to go down. Ah, uh, yes, to the land of the Philistines, the uncircumcised. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the problem with stewardship uh, is that you can uh, like what you like so much uh, that it starts making you comfortable with your enemies. Uh, this is going to choke slam somebody a couple of weeks from now. Uh, uh, the problem we have here. Uh, is that the Philistines have always been an Israel enemy. They've always been the oppressors. And Samson got comfortable with his enemies. The scripture says that his fathers and mother knew that this was not of the Lord. Ah, yes, but that the Lord had sought an occasion to deal with the Philistines who had dominion over the Israelites. So Samson, amen, went down. Ah, yes, to Tenath. And he came to the vineyards of Tenath. And the scripture says he sees a, a, a young lion roaring. The spirit of the Lord comes upon Samson and with his bare hands, no instrument, he rips this lion apart. Ah, yes. And he goes down, amen, to this woman. And the scripture says, amen, she pleased Samson well. Ah, the scripture says that after some time he returned to her. But on his way home, the scripture says he sees this lion that he has desecrated. There's honey now in Amen the lion. He's not supposed to associate with dead things. Ah, yes, but because he's so enamored with his ability that he picks up the honey and he takes it home and even gives his family to eat of the honey. Uh, the scripture says that Samson uh, uh, yes, is engaged, betrothed, uh, amen, to this young lady that God says you're not supposed to have. Uh, uh, and the scripture says they go down uh, uh, for the wedding feast. Uh, uh, I'm giving you the Crenshaw version so we can get out of here, y'all. So just flow with me. Uh, 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 now, in the Old Testament days, uh, uh, when you had a wedding, it wasn't just an afternoon. Uh, uh, sometimes you find the venue. Uh, and sometimes they say go out the room and you come back in the room. You come back in the room, it's a whole new reception, right? In the same place. No. Um, these occasions were week-long marriage occasions. Feasts and festivals. Ah, uh, yes, and so Samson, because he's aware of the strip that he has, and he's aware of the power in his life, he begins now to be a comedian. He starts telling riddles to the Philistines. He says to these men who come down, he says to them, he says, hey, if you can guess this riddle, ah, yes, you'll owe me 30 garments, ah, yes, and some money. But if you figure it out, I will owe it to you. Ah, the scripture says, ah, yes, that after three days, the men of the city could not make out this riddle that Samson was telling them, basically saying, I ripped apart a lion and there was honey inside of this thing. Uh, so after three days, the men are scratching their heads. Uh, they go to this woman that Samson wants to marry. Uh, they say to this bride-to-be, they say, you got to help us out. Ah, uh, uh, yes, you part of our kindred. Uh, uh, get in his ear and find out what it is uh, that Samson is talking about. Uh, uh, the scripture says that she gets so vexed the week of her marriage. Uh, uh, she's brought to tears. Uh, uh, Come on, Samson, tell me. What you keeping secrets from me from? Ah, uh, yeah, we supposed to be married. You can't be just. Uh, come on, tell me, tell me, tell me. Ah, uh, y'all know how y'all. Come on, ladies, y'all know how y'all cut up. Ah, uh, yeah, go walk with me in scripture. Uh, how we gonna have a relationship on the right foot? Uh, and you keeping secrets from me? Ah, uh, come on now. 
<laughs> you already know how it went down. The South Central version, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, yes, the scripture says she vexed him sore <laughs> to the point that he had to give up his secret. <laughs> when he gives up his secret, the men come to Samson. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> and they say the strength of a lion <laughs> and the sweetness of the honey. <laughs> Ah, yes, Samson gets enraged. And Samson says, the only reason why you figured this out is because you've been messing with my boo thing. Ah, the scripture says that Samson ends up smiting these 30 or so men. And he returns home to come back, amen, to go into the chamber with his wife. When Samson shows back up, ladies and gentlemen, his father-in-law blocks Samson from going into the bride chamber room. Samson like, what you mean? We, we married. What you talking about? The father says to Samson, man, look, we thought you hated her because of what you did to the kindred. We thought you, you know, so we let somebody, we let your best man marry her. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine how, yes, how enraged Samson became? The scripture says it like this. Samson got so mad. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. He found 30 foxes, tied them up together. Now, let me just stop right there. Y'all know how fast foxes are. How did he have time to gather up 300 foxes? But the scripture says with his strength, he tied them all up by the tail, set it on fire, and let the, let the foxes go forth in all of the vegetation, all the vegetation of the Philistines. If you can imagine the foxes burning up everything. Uh, yes, you can only imagine how, how ticked off the Philistines must have been. The scripture says Samson retreated. Samson retreats. Uh, yes, uh, with news that the Philistines want Samson. They want Samson because Samson has destroyed the agriculture. Samson has destroyed their harvest. The scriptures say that the men of the Israelites, because they have no backbone, they come to Sam, they say, Samson, man, we got a little problem on our hand. Uh, yeah, they want us to do something because you didn't messed up. They prop you, you already know, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you uh <laughs> they killed that man though. Don't don't trip. They killed him for what he did because he was foul. <laughs> um, but they want us to bring, so just tell us how what what you want us to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Samson says, bring me. <laughs> Tie me up, but don't let them, hey, don't kill me. But let me face these Philistines. The scripture says as Samson comes out with flax on his hands, the spirit of the Lord moved upon Samson. Ah, yes, he moved upon Samson in a fashion ah, yeah, that those flax that were on his arms became like rubber bands. Ah, yes, and they begin to melt off of his hands. The Bible says that Samson opened his eyes and he saw the jawbone of an ass. The scripture says he surrounded about a thousand Philistines. And the Bible says that Samson picks up the bone, the jawbone of an ass, and he slays a thousand men. I'm coming to my close because ladies and gentlemen, Ah, yes, something interesting happens in the text. The Bible says that after Samson has done this great feast, he gets up to move to destiny. Ah, yeah. You know how it is when we're trying to move to destiny. Uh, Y'all know how it is. We've got to get luggage. We've got to get our things together. Uh, yes, to, to, to get to destiny. I don't know how y'all do, but like me, sometimes, uh, yes, I wait to the very last minute to start packing. Uh, yeah. uh, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
the scripture says that after he does this feat the Bible says after he picked up the jawbone of an ass and had done all of these wonderful things the scripture says that Samson is exhausted Samson is dying of thirst Samson says to the Lord how is it that I have been given this great deliverance and now I'm thirsty and now here I am ready to die the scripture says that Samson after this feat he does something interesting after he heals a thousand with a jawbone of an ass the scripture says brother Gary he threw his jawbone away I said to myself it's interesting how the things that give us victory we don't longer think we need in our next season in life I got to get out of here y'all missed it I find it interesting evangelist Linda that the very thing that brought him victory he had no more use for it so he threw it away can I talk to some people in here today to tell you you've got your bags packed with things that you think will be necessary for your next level and next season in God but God says you've got to be more picky because the very thing that brought you victory in that last season is the very thing you gonna need in your next level and I come to tell somebody today that God has given you a bone of prayer you've used that bone to pray you through seasons of frustration and it's given you the victory and then all of a sudden you've thrown it away because you feel like it has no more value but do me a favor and say neighbor on your way to your next level you gotta be more picky make sure you're packing the stuff that brought you success in your last season God said you used to commune with me you used to pray you used to tithe you used to worship you used to be faithful now all of a sudden you don't have no more use for it and I hear God saying tell my church in this next level of greater they gotta be better stewards of what I've given them because God says what you use in that last season to give you victory is gonna be necessary for your revival I got to get out of here but do me a favor and shake your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor you've got to be more picky you got to make sure that you're loading yourself up in this next season you got to make sure you're packing character you got to make sure that you're packing consistency come on find you a new neighbor and say neighbor are you sure that you're packed a consecrated life for this next season some of you got stuff in your bag you really don't need and God says if you want supernatural revival if you want water if you want to see greater if you want a next level manifestation you better make sure that you don't throw away the thing I gave you to give Give you victory in your last season. I get out of here because we got a 3:30 service. But do me a favor, get out of that seat, shake hands with three people, and tell them, don't you throw it away? Don't you throw it away? 
Don't you throw away your relationship with God. Don't you throw away the thing that empowers you. Don't you throw away the thing that brought you over. Don't you throw away the thing that made you blessed. Don't you throw away the thing that empowers you. Don't you get so sedated that you forget the instrument that brought you deliverance. Somebody in the house, clap your hands. I feel the wind of God pushing me. But tell somebody, I've got the right to be picky in this season. Turn around and tell somebody, I've got a right to be picky in this season. I'm only packing stuff that makes me faithful. I'm only packing stuff that brings me closer to God. I'm only packing stuff. I wish I had some help in this house. I feel like I'm in Chicago. Come on in here. I feel the wind of God compelling me to tell you, don't you forget the mantle that brought you over. Don't you forget the thing that caused your enemy to pack up. Don't you forget the very thing that empowered you all these years. Tell somebody you better hold on to what he gave you. You better hold on to what brought you through. If you know it was prayer, don't you abandon prayer. If you know it was faithfulness to the house of God, don't you throw it away. You gotta learn to be more picky. You gotta learn there's water in the thing. You don't understand. There was water in all night prayer. There was water in reading your word. There was water in coming to choir rehearsal. There was water in coming to when we Bible study. Tell somebody God said pick up that bone. There's a life in it. Pick it up. Somebody clap your hands and give God glory. Give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, God said that instrument still has oil on it. Tell them that instrument still has a prophetic tone. That instrument still has life in it. Don't you abandon it. You better make sure in your picking you pick the things that bring you closer to God I wish I had some help in here I feel like going crazy I hear God saying tell my church pick up that praise tell my church pick up faithfulness tell my church pick up holiness tell my church pick up righteousness you thought it was your education that you need in the next season but God says you gotta be more picky I wish you would holler at your neighbor and say neighbor I know prayer still works I said look at your neighbor and say neighbor I know a consecrated life still matters I know holiness without which no man can see the kingdom of God. Somebody hollering here. I gotta be more picky. I gotta be more picky. I gotta be more picky. Come on in here. Clap your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm closing, but do me a favor. Grab one person by the hand and say, neighbor, in this season, I 
give you permission to let go of things that don't work but say neighbor today I'm picking you to praise God with me till the waters spring up again I'm picking you to open your mouth with me until my joy comes back until my strength comes back I'm tired in my body but I picked the right church I had a lot of options but I came here squeeze that hair and say neighbor don't you fail me I need a win don't you fail me I need the breath of God don't you fail me I need you to praise him till my mind comes back I need you to praise God until depression leaves my home I'm picky I'm picky I picked you to help me with my breakthrough I picked you to help me get over I picked you to help me get through lift that hand and praise Get out of that seat and do me a favor. Touch five people and lay your hand on them and say, neighbor, God said, let your spirit come alive again. Your hand selected for promotion. I'm picking your time. I'm picking today. God said, let the river flow. God said, let your mind come back. God said, be healed. God said, be forgiven. God said, be delivered. God said, be the head. God said, be above and not beneath. God said, be victorious. I gotta be picky. I need some praises to join me and praising God for the best season of my life. It awaits me. Praise! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Scream at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't want to praise them, get out of my way. If you don't want to dance, get out of my way. I've got to be more picky. I got to get with somebody that is desperate as me. I got to find somebody as desperate as me. Come on in here. Find you a praise partner. Find you a praise partner. And bless. Come on, fill it up. Fill my cup. Come on in here. Fill it up. Forget your neighbor, lift your hands, and tell God, I'm unpacking lust, I'm unpacking exes, I'm unpacking fear, I'm unpacking dead works, I'm unpacking the things that have held me down, and I'm going after the jawbone again, I'm going after the thing I'm packing the things that fortify me. I'm packing the things you have ordained. I'm packing the things you want accomplished in my life. I know it's dated, but it still works. I know we did it in the 80s, but it still works. Thank <laughs> you.
Tell somebody, I've got to be more picky. The Bible says, Samson went to the thing that he discarded and found life in it. God is not going to give you something new for this journey. Come on. Go with me in the spirit. You think it's God because it's exotic and it looks nice. God is saying it's time for some of us to return to the things that worked. I know we tell you to make room for the new things God is doing. But God says you better make sure that you're more picky in this season. That you're loading and downloading things pleasing to God. Oh, Shammai. Not you, me. Not y'all, me. I've got to be more picky. I've got to make sure his word. Not Instagram. Not a 30 second reel. I've got to make sure every word he's given me goes with me. It's all about stewardship. Not enough time to tell you all the bonehead things that Samson did. But God says, I'm not giving you something new to get you out of this. I want you to go back to the thing that you're ignoring. I want you to go back because there's still life in it. God worked greater work that led to his revival with something he thought he no longer needed some of us were so advanced we're advanced Christians we're advanced believers we're just you know we're just we're scholars and we're just so we have so much depth and we're just so deep and so and 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 God says go back and pick up the text again and watch the rivers of living water come out of the very thing you've been ignoring. I've got to be more picky. I had to pick up the jawbone for victory. And now I've got to go back and pick up the jawbone for revival. I've got to be. Don't you let people get you comfortable in what's happening in the day that you ignore what worked. This is the word of the Lord. This conference, God says there's some weights. There's some things we think we need. There's some things we just feel like it's who I am. And, and so I just, I wear it. And, and God says, you better make sure. <laughs> you better make sure that you aren't so attached with stuff blogging you down. God ain't in everything that's new and shiny. I know this is old school, but <laughs> God says, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. I know you have strategy. I know you got a degree, but go back. I know you see the world in a different lens. And, and for some of you, even online, it don't take all that. But God says, that's where you found me. You didn't find my power on the screen. You found my power at the altar. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You didn't find your strength by 
being connected to something that was connected you found your strength because you attached yourself to the presence of God God bless you